If you've got bad teeth, here's adding a little insult to injury. Having bad teeth may predispose you to having a bad heart. A new study in the New England Journal of Medicine says bad teeth may be linked to heart disease, as bacteria can enter the bloodstream from the mouth and cause problems elsewhere. Joining us for a better understanding is Dr. Maria Emanuel Ryan, professor and director of clinical research at the State University of New York at Stony Brook um, School of Medicine. Welcome, Maria. Uh, thank you, Dr. Moritz. Now, you're a dentist. You're not a cardiologist. What's this link between gum disease and heart disease? Well, they, they've known for quite some time that chronic inflammation can certainly increase your risk for heart disease. And the most common chronic inflammatory condition that people have is periodontal disease, gum disease. Well, it seems that gums are, have been in the news recently. We did a story here on gum disease and pancreatic cancer. I know about it as an obstetrician with gum disease and premature labor. Let, let's take the viewers through it slowly of how the gums can cause damage to other parts of your body. Well, what happens is, as you develop plaque around the teeth, or, or have bacteria accumulate around the teeth, this will cause inflammation. And sometimes we see this as reddened and inflamed or swollen gums, uh, gums that bleed when you brush or floss. And if that's left untreated, uh, eventually uh, gingivitis, which is the reversible form of the disease, can progress to periodontitis, where you have loss of bone and connective tissue attachment, and eventually the teeth can become loose and fall out. So if you don't treat this disease, you can actually, as you mentioned earlier, have these bacteria enter into the bloodstream and cause inflammation in other areas of the body, including the blood vessels and, and increasing the risk for heart disease by twofold and stroke by threefold if left untreated. Right, just fascinating. Uh, let's go over this study a little bit. What they did was they found people with very severe gum disease yes. and they did, the, I guess, a, a cleaning or a descaling. Mm -hmm. What they did find, which was interesting, was that when they first did it, actually things got worse and then explain to me what happened afterwards. Yes, well what happens is as you um, initially do a very deep cleaning, which is a scaling and root planing, which was the intensive therapy in the study, you will find a spike in the levels of uh, factors uh, associated with inflammation, such as C-reactive protein. But shortly after that, the levels come down and actually can dip below what they originally were because of the therapy. And so what that means to us is that even if you brush and floss or eat things that can cause bleeding of the gums, that you will have this chronic inflammation and the spiking of the levels of these inflammatory markers in the, in the bloodstream. So it's very important to get it treated because the study did demonstrate that after intensive therapy with the scaling and root planing and the use of a locally applied antibiotic, which they put in the pocket, a minocycline uh, antibiotic known as Arrestin, they were able to uh, bring the levels down below what was seen originally and actually improved on endothelial function. And these are the, the cells that line the blood vessels. Well, so let, let's, let's give some concrete advice to people out there. First of all, I want to go through what is the recommendations, because I don't know them, uh, for gum cleaning or checking if you don't have a history of disease. And let's go through it if somebody's been diagnosed with heart disease. Well, certainly uh, the American Dental Association and the American Academy of Periodontology uh, recommends that people brush twice a day, and, and I mean thoroughly brush their teeth twice a day and floss at least once a day. So that is the recommendation for people to maintain good oral health. But unfortunately, many people don't even recognize that they have periodontal disease because many of the signs and symptoms are often uh, not seen in patients, uh, particularly in smokers who are at the greatest risk. We, they may not see the bleeding of the gums. Uh, that are seen with patients who are non-smokers. So these patients need to be seen by a dental professional so that they can be examined to determine if they have periodontal disease. Uh, one in every three adults has some form of periodontal disease, yet many of these people are not being treated. Well, do you see the day where uh, if somebody develops heart disease, a heart attack or something, that the next step 
outside of going to the cardiac care unit, is that a dentist come visit them and check them for periodontal disease? Well, that's exactly what we're beginning to do even at our institution at Stony Brook University in our General Clinical Research Center, uh, working with our chair of cardiology, Dr. David Brown, is we have people who are being admitted to the hospital for acute coronary syndrome. And right after uh, they are treated for their heart problems, they are examined by us to determine their periodontal status so that they can have uh, the treatment needed to prevent a future heart attack. Great. We have just a little bit of time. Give me some other diseases that you think are going to make the headlines this year being associated with periodontal disease. Well, I think the big one is diabetes um, because diabetes is an epidemic in this country and we know that periodontal disease is one of the long-term complications of diabetes and actually on Monday I will be giving a talk at the Centers for Disease Control talking about how the dentist can help to better manage the diabetic patient because in those patients it truly is a vicious cycle because once they develop periodontal disease if it's not treated it also makes it very difficult for the diabetic patient to control their blood glucose levels and bring those levels down because they become insulin resistant so it's really critical in that particular patient population. Great. Maria, thank you very much. We'll look forward to hearing about your talk at the CDC, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Dr. Moritz. Have a great day. Great. We hope you found this edition of Healthy Life informative. To find out more on this story and other health-related topics, we invite you to go to our website at abcnews.com. And as always, we encourage you to personally get involved in our program by visiting the, doc the Dr. Tim on Call section of our website. There you can send us your video feedback by email and video and suggest topics Dr. Tim might address right here on Healthy Life. Thanks for joining us today from all of us at the Healthy Life production team. We hope you stay healthy and I'll see you next time.